All right, I'm Dr. Duke Majan, and it is January 24th, 2023. We're getting ready to start our uh, Duke Laser Disc Repair Lumbar on a patient who has presented here with back and left leg pain. And we're going to, are we going after 5-1 first, right? 5-1 doesn't look lined up properly. Let's play with it. I think we're off on the wag. I mean, maybe a bit off on rotation or orbit. So um, if you do, that's better. If you do endoscopic surgery, you always want to uh, be sure to have your x-ray machine set up properly before you really get too far into the surgery shot and the reason for that is the x-ray machine is your guide it's what you're using to navigate and right now can we get 5-1 fixed you want to make sure that your x-ray lines up properly with the actual spine itself so for example that's better um, I think we're off a little bit on WAG, maybe one degree. Maybe the other way. I'm looking at the end plate of five. Try a little more. That's not bad. That's a little worse, I think. Maybe it's not terribly worse, but it's cl closely worse. All right. We're going to head for L5S1 close and everybody's a little different with their anatomy this patient is obviously has his unique anatomy um, and getting to five one is always hard it's a little higher than I want to be I think we're off on orbit you see the orbital change right there that's a little better a little more The reason we're off on orbit, now it's the other way actually, is that the patient has some scoliosis at 5-1. I guess that's pretty good right there. Shot? You need to be a little bit further south. And right now I'm making sure that um, the fluoro lines up nicely, Shot. 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 I think we're a little lateral. Let's get an AP. You have to make sure that the x-ray machine lines up perfectly with the spine. Obviously, we don't see the spine because the patient's got soft tissues around it. And we, we have to take the picture with the x-ray to see if it's lined up. Yeah, a little bit lateral. So the process of moving the x-ray machine relative to the spine is something we have to do in the beginning of the surgery to make sure that we have all the target points and uh, navigational points all set up properly. Shot. I wonder if I'm running into... There we go, shot. That's better. How reliable is he? All right. So we're just going to hold here. And I'm not going to go any further with this needle. I'm going to wait. But I do want to make my incision because we're going to go for the next disc, which is the uh, L45. Obviously, he has a lot of tattoos. And he's very proud of his heritage. Huh? I'll give him a little extra because he's got his shoulder strain. No problem. Yeah, you want to keep his shoulder and neck comfortable. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just making the incision. I'm trying to make it away from his tattoo, like above the tattoo, just above it. And uh, so far, so good. He's got a complicated tattoo back here. All right. 
that's good. I'm gonna aim a little. Everybody seems to be on antiplatelets these days. You're doing okay, my friend. You're giving me a thumbs up. You're great. Just hang out. You're doing great. Yep. Give us a minute or two here. We're gonna be asking you some questions. Shot. Yeah. Shot. So this is a harder disc to get into because it's more collapsed. Shot. All right, right at the back there by the facet shot. Uh huh. Give me an AP. What is today the day of antiplatelet therapy? Go ahead. Uh, it's beautiful. Do we check? Let's go ahead and, and show our audience a video of why do people with herniated or degenerated discs get back pain? Okay, because there's a reason they do get back pain and it comes from a tear in the back of the disc. Traumatic injury to the disc can cause annular tears to form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. All right. Welcome back. Now we're at our last of the three discs we're fixing here. This is the L3-4 shot. And this has got the biggest herniation of all of them. Shot. just commenting earlier about the antiplatelet drugs that I'm seeing, the antiplatelet effects. Shot? Let's give me an AP. Aspirin. Yeah, but what else is there? Yeah, but there's something else. This is more than aspirin. Could be natural, could be BC powder, goodies powder. Did we ask about that? Uh huh. Yeah, all those do cause blood thinning. All right. So we're on the, the top disc at this point, and I mean, a lot of bone spurs. I'm surprised. Where do you feel that? That's what you can speak up? Yeah. All right. You feel it in your back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back. Yeah. It feels it in the Shot. Back. Can you get that pedicle of four lined up a little better? See it? It's a little offset. A 
little bit more. I think you're off on orbit by a degree and then wag by a degree. <laughs> Yeah, that's better on the wag. How about the orbit? Did you fix the orbit? Yeah, I did the wag. All right, so that's not bad. I think that's perfect there. Uh, the wag could be of half a degree. Just half a degree, one way or the other. Uh, well, well, that would explain it. We're too low shot shot where do you feel it shot yeah it's your bad disc yeah we found it we got gotcha. you we got gotcha. you you doing all right yeah yeah we got that one <coughs> what me or who you all right? Can you hear me? How long have you had back pain for? Five one. Eight years? Thirty years. Thirty eight years. Sorry, I'm gonna write that down. So let me ask you a question. You're awake, right? I need to see five one. Are you awake? All right, you know who's talking to you? That's it. So here's the deal. You got your history of your life on your chronicled on your back, right? Yes, sir. If I fix your back pain, yes, I want to see a Duke Spine Institute tattoo back here. You understand? I do. You've had lower back pain for 38 years, and we're going to fix that today. I think you're going to be a happy man. How long did you get the problems with your left leg? Hmm? Burned is. I can't hear. Sorry. In the army? Yeah. In the army. How long have you had left leg problems? Same time. Wow, 38 years. Jeez. Left, left lower extremity is 38 years. So this patient suffered with back pain and left leg symptoms for 38 years. All right, Jordan, what do we got there at 5-1? You're off on orbit by about half a degree, maybe. Can't tell if that's better. And your wag is off. Wag is off. All right, so we're just lining the x-ray up. And the reason why it's it's... It, no, the other way. The reason why it's uh, uh, taken so long is he has a little bit of scoliosis because of the degenerative disc disease. So we're trying to, oh, that looks better on the pedicles of five. The end plate of five looks good. I think that's probably the best we're going to get. Are you okay? Yes, I'm not sure. You okay? Yeah. All right. We just need your help for another few minutes. You feel anything there? Okay, you did it. Please. You comfy? Yeah. All right. No. Can't say it was easy. All right. Well, we think your back pain is coming from three discs, the 5-1, yeah. the L4-5, and the L3-4, okay? So have you watched these surgeries done? You know, we're going to put you to sleep in a couple of minutes, right? And then when you wake up, we'll be done with your surgery. But so far, everything is going perfectly well. We didn't have any problems, okay? This is the fun part. The fun part you're not going to remember. Because Dr. Verndez is going to make sure you don't remember any of this. doing great apparently our last sur patient is ready to go the 93 year old so for those of you that watched she's already ready to go home if she wants to wait I'll be happy to see her in about an hour but if she can leave now if she wants to just yeah I don't need her to wait but she can go yeah I'll see her tomorrow
30 minutes she was walking. Hey, you ready? You comfy? All right. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? Nine. nine. Is that where you typically get your back pain? All right, so that was a 9 out of 10 at L3-4. Look at L3-4. You can't even see the dye. It literally blew out of the disc. 9 over 10. Concordant. Yeah, that, that hole in your disc is so big, it just flew right out. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? So we just say 10. 10 out of 10. Is that where you get your back pain? That pain's going to be gone when we're done, by the way. You never come back. You okay? All right, that's the L5-S1. How bad is that? Yeah, so the worst pain came from the disc that looks the best on your MRI. Can you believe that? That's why we, we pay attention to the patient, not the MRI. All right, you get to go to sleep. And when you wake up, sir, we will be done with your surgery, and that pain will be gone for good. All right, I want you to count out loud for me, okay? Give me a loud count, 1 to 100 out loud. So to summarize, he had 9 to 10 out of 10 pain at each of these three discs that are, we thought, based on his exam. I picked up on it during the exam. And I think I did a telemed. Where are you from? New Mexico. You say New Mexico? Michigan. I apologize. Michigan. So our patient is from Michigan. I don't know why I heard New Mexico. The patient here is from uh, Michigan. He found us online, like many people, either on Facebook or Google, YouTube, and was so impressed with the results we were getting with the laser, he decided to come here after 38 years of suffering with back pain. And here we are, we're gonna fix his discs. He's got three bad discs and um, I figured out where his pain was coming from because on examination, he had told me, hey, my pain is coming from this area right here in his back. And I checked it out and guess what? The three bad discs on the MRI were in the same, same area. So I knew that we had the right spot. Shot? Shot? All right, there's the guide wire at L34. So we're starting with L34. Why? Because that's what Luis told me to do. I follow instructions. Luis, I've learned to listen to my help because they typically know better than I do. I talk about our zero infection rate. All right, let me give him some medicine. We're going to give you some more numbing medicine. We have a zero infection rate, and that's largely because of I want to say our equipment, but also our staff. You have to understand, if you have the best equipment, it doesn't matter if they don't use it right. So our staff are fantastic, Sean. And because of that, we have no infections to date. And we want to keep that record. You're all right, everything's okay, you're doing great, don't move. So he's still going to sleep. I'm gonna give him another minute. I put some more numbing medicine in and the anesthesiologist is working on keeping him comfortable. All right, we'll just wait another minute. So for those of you who are watching and will see a lot of the surgery, you see this oozing right here that we're getting? That's a platelet problem. Um, when you get that initial ooze, it looks like a watery ooze and it just oozes and oozes. It doesn't squirt. That is platelet problem. That means the patient is on some type of medicine that blocks the platelets from sticking together. Whenever you get cut, the first thing that happens is your platelets, which are little bitty pieces floating around in your bloodstream, they see the cut and they come together and form a plug. Literally like a little plug on a wine bottle, cork. And we call that the platelet plug. But for them to work, they have to stick together and they have to stick to the, <coughs> the um, 
what's called the tunica adventitia, which is uh, collagen basically in the outer wall of the blood vessels that's been cut. They got to see that and they stick to it. Ready? And so um, if the platelets are impaired and cannot stick together or stick to the collagen, they don't get activated to form a plug, right? And basically the patient is just going to ooze. So that's why we have all of our patients stop the drugs or medicines or herbal stuff that causes the platelets not to work. We have them stop it a week before surgery. Now, sometimes patients listen, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're on things we don't even know are gonna cause the platelets not to work. And I have a feeling that may be the case with this patient. He may be taking something herbal like Red Bull or I don't know, monster energy drinks and there's something inside those drinks that make people bleed during surgery, okay? So it's not a coagulation problem, it's an antiplatelet effect. Shot? Okay, we're in entering the first painful disc, which is the three, four. 38 years of back pain, folks, 38 years. And all that's gonna be gone today. Incredible, huh? I think I couldn't get it all the way. I'm excited for him. All right, Henry. Yes, sir. Let's roll the video showing our audience how do herniated discs actually cause back pain? Like, what's the way they do it? Because we now understand how a herniated or degenerated disc causes back pain. And Duke Spine Institute discovered this. We discovered it um, 16 years ago, but we published it for the first time 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago now, in 2012. And it was published by our early research team, including myself um, and Arias Duke Majin, Jason Cutright, and Augusto Cianciabella. And we did the pioneering work and in terms of publishing. Of course, at that point in 2012, I had already been doing the surgery uh, for uh, additional five years before that. So uh, we started publishing our results for the first time in 2012. There is no surgery in the world that has as good a result for curing back pain as the Duke laser disc repair and the Duke plasma rhizotomy. All right. Are we on the video? Traumatic injury to the disc can cause annular tears to form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Sorry, I can't hear you guys. Welcome back. Um, as you can see from our video, the pain from a herniated disc actually comes from 
an uh, area in the back of the disc called a tear, annular tear. That was what we discovered here at Duke Spine. We're the first to treat it in the world. The treatment is called an annular debridement. It's where we go in and use a laser to clean the tear. That's what I'm doing right now. You can see all the pieces of herniation just coming out um, as a result of that debridement. This is the tear right here. Now look at all the calcium, the golden color stuff. That just shows you how old this injury is. When you start seeing, see the gold stuff? Every time the laser hits the tissue, it turns kind of a golden color. And you see the whitest color of this disc? That's all scar tissue. So this has been going on for a long time. And it's all due to inflammation inside the disc. Now earlier I was talking about this patient and their bleeding. And I said there could be an energy drink like Red Bull or Monster. I was using those as an example. This patient, I don't know if he does or doesn't, but I was told by a relative he does not use energy drinks. I'm not, wasn't saying that he did. I'm just saying there's a lot of things that can cause bleeding. A lot of, you know, fruits and vegetables and herbal stuff. I don't have a list of them all. But there's something in his diet that besides the aspirin that is, he's taking or using that is causing the platelets not to work. Yeah, it doesn't matter low dose or not. You know, 81 has an antiplatelet effect. And it takes 30 days for that to clear. So obviously, we have a lot of people on aspirin. And we tell them to stop a week before surgery. They do. Uh, and I don't see this issue. All I'm trying to say is the little bit of bleeding we're getting is something that I think is related to uh, something to do with the platelets. I just don't have a good answer why. All right, I'm trying to pull out these pieces of loose herniated disc material, degenerated disc. I don't want any of them getting loose later and coming out. Now just to give you an idea of the size of things here, the laser fiber, that glass thing there is, is one millimeter. That's small, folks, really small. So as you look at that glass fiber where the laser energy comes out of, just think that's one millimeter. That's the size of basically a put your fingers close together and just so you can see some light between them. That's a millimeter, okay? So it's tiny, but in this surgery, it looks big. That's a piece of herniation right there. See how loose it is? We're going to go grab it out. All right, I know we have some questions, and before we, um, I'll go ahead and take some of them, and then we'll go and do our second video showing how the Duke Laser Disc Repair actually works to eliminate back and leg pain. All right. Uh, the, this first one comes from uh, Lori, uh, Laura Lee on YouTube. And this is a comment to, uh, to a question. And they uh, said, good afternoon, doctor. I have a feeling someday in my future I will be reaching out to you. Thank you uh, for keeping people well informed. The Thank you. And the question is, is it common for a person who has damage at, uh, at the C3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 to have awful pain in the thoracic area of the uh, spine? Big herniation. There's a good herniation right there. Sorry. To have uh, pain in the thoracic spine, is that what the question? Uh, the pain in the thoracic spine between the shoulder blades, even though my MRI doesn't show uh, much of an issue there. Can you see this herniation here? Yes, you can. Great. That's uh, one of the the fragments at L L34. Even though the spine doesn't show a herniation there, yeah, is that correct? Uh, yes, it, it's uh, yeah. uh, between the shoulder blades, uh, the, even though uh, her uh, MRI doesn't show much of an issue there. Yeah, so first of all, never trust the MRI read by the radiologist or your doctor, ever. You need somebody who's extremely experienced in reading an MRI like me, or Duke Spine Institute, okay? We see the actual cause of pain that other doctors miss. And the reason is they're looking for big things. Pain is usually from small things. And 
what I mean is they're looking for a giant herniation. And you're not gonna find that 95% of the time. When you have a small herniation, that's where the pain's actually coming from. So they ignore those things thinking they're not important, but we know they are important. And therefore we look for them and we can find them. So my advice to you, if you really want an answer, hop on to our virtual consultation page, fill out the questionnaire and schedule yourself a uh, 10 minute virtual consultation. You're gonna have to upload your MRI in advance and I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna tell you why you're having that pain, okay? But the best way to do that is through the virtual consultation. I can't really tell you why you're having it right now, but I can tell you that C3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, they don't cause pain between the shoulder blades. That's usually a thoracic problem and you could have a small disc herniation that's causing that. It could also be facet joints. Very common for people to get thoracic facet joint pain. That is totally fixable with a simple procedure called the Duke plasma rhizotomy, where we go in and basically deaden the pain nerve to the facets. I hope that answers your question for you. But my advice is use the link. Henry will give it to you. It's dukespine.com slash v forward slash VC, virtual consultation. Henry's gonna put it there for you. You can just click on it. It'll open up a page on your browser, on your YouTube, I mean, uh, web browser. And you can go in there and send us the information we need to help you make a diagnosis, okay? The only reason why is I've told you guys this over and over again. I cannot make a diagnosis without seeing the MRI without doing an exam where I could see you and your body. I'm gonna have you point to where the pain is and without doing somewhat of a zoom exam on you. And if I have all that, I can pretty accurately make a diagnosis, but I can't do it off a report. I can't do it off a picture. I, I need more information. And by the way, I don't think I've ever met a, a doctor who is able to make the diagnosis as well as I am. I've seen a lot of doctors, spine docs, and over the years I've refined my way so that I'm pretty darn accurate. Um, and if I'm one of the better doctors at diagnosing the source of pain, and I'm telling you I can't do it without the right things like the MRI images, the MRI report, and, and a physical exam over Zoom, if I can't do it without those things, then nobody can, all right? And so anybody else trying to do that diagnosis without those basic elements is gonna give you the wrong diagnosis. And listen, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Wrong diagnoses are a dime a dozen. You can get a wrong diagnosis anywhere. It's getting the right diagnosis that's gonna lead to you getting rid of your pain. That's why we have our video testimonial section. We're showing you not just how great the surgery is, but also that you need the right diagnosis to get rid of the pain. Those video testimonials are more than just, we got lucky on those surgeries. Our, our success rate is very high because we make the right diagnosis up front. And I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you the diagnosis was really at this point 95% of the issue. Um, I got one minute left on this disc, one minute. And then we're gonna go to the next one. It's looking pretty good. I don't really see much left. You guys doing all right with the irrigation? All right, let's go ahead and run the video on how does the Duke Laser Disc Repair actually work? And then we'll come back and take some more questions. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made.
A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Okay, welcome back. Um, and now that you've seen how the Duke Laser Disc Repair does its job of debriding the annular tear, getting rid of back pain by getting rid of the inflammation in the posterior annular tear. The source of the pain, which is the interposed nuclear herniation of the herniation. There's two parts to a herniated disc. There's the stalk and there's the cap. Everyone looks at the cap. Everyone looks at the part that's outside the disc pushing on the nerve. And they say, oh, look at that, it's small or it's big. Like they really know what they're talking about. In reality, it's not the cap that's the most important. It's actually the stalk. We call that the interposed herniation. That was a terminology that Dr. Anthony Young taught me because it's interposed within the annular tear. Anyway, it turns out the interposed herniation is the cause of back pain and neck pain or thoracic pain when you have a herniated disc. So that's what we're targeting to get rid of back pain with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. You're good. Should be out now. Just slide it up. Shot. Guide wire is stable. Bring the dilator. All right, let's get back to the questions as we get ready to start disc number two. This question comes from Bobby Dale on YouTube. Uh -huh. and they asked, uh, what about L5 through S1 par fracture spon uh, spondylolisthesis? Yeah, great question. So we have a viewer who's saying, hey, what happens though if somebody has a pars fracture um, and a spondylolisthesis where their bones are slipping? The answer is we do the same surgery. Why? Because the pars fracture, or pars defect as it's also known, and the spondylolisthesis, my friend, it turns out they're not the cause of their back pain. They never cause back pain. It's still the annular tear that is the cause of the back pain and leg pain, okay? It's never the pars fracture, it's never the listhesis. God's honest truth. I used to tell patients the same thing in my fusion days. I would tell them, oh, you have a pars fracture, spondylolisthesis, we need to do a decompression and fusion. And we would do it, and they would do great. But then I had patients who didn't want the decompression and fusion. They said, do the laser. And I'm like, uh, I don't think it's gonna work. Do it anyway. Okay, I did it. And guess what? Their back pain and leg pain went away, 100%. Whoops, Luis. I'm sorry, man. It's all that tequila I had for lunch <laughs> with our burritos. Just kidding. I don't really drink, so. I had a very bad experience with tequila in Mexico a long time ago. Sean? That's good. And I never could drink tequila after that. But every once in a while, I'll have a, a nice margarita. So what I'm saying to you is, very simply put, if you have a pars fracture and a listhesis, you do not need a fusion and decompression. I have not had a single patient that we did the Duke laser disc repair at a pars fracture listhesis level. We haven't been able to get rid of the back pain and the leg symptoms, okay? That's because what's the real problem is still the annular tear and disc herniation. And by the way, I'm not the only person who will say that. If you talk to spine surgeons, lots of them, they say, oh, y whether you do a fusion at a spondy, you do a fusion, or whether you just do a laminectomy, the results are the same, right? There's lots of papers published. Of
course, I don't recommend a laminectomy. I think it's a horrible procedure. But um, the Duke laser disc repair is far less invasive than a laminectomy. So point is, not everybody believes in fusing a, a pars defect spondy. Okay? It's actually in neurosurgery world, it's, it's a huge, what do you call it? Um, when people disagree, there's another herniation. Show this one. It's, it's a huge point of, uh, yeah, contention or just disagreement. Can you guys see this herniation right there? Yes, we can. All right. So that's just one piece. We've got lots of them. And uh, each of these, quote, unquote, discs, herniations, has actually multiple fragments. Controversy. That's the word I'm looking for. The, the fusion of spondylolisthesis, even among neurosurgeons, us, us neurosurgeons, because I am a neurosurgeon, um, is up for debate. Even today in 2023, the, the, the blood is being spilt in the battlefield of disagreement. You have surgeons who believe a spondy should be fused. You have surgeons who believe it should not be fused. As a matter of fact, if you go back to the surgeries I did last week, the live streams, you'll see we had a gentleman with uh, three spondies. I think it was L2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. Three of them. And we fixed his back pain without fixing his spondy. So he's very happy when he left. All right, what other questions are there for us? No current questions. We just have a comment from Dan on Facebook who uh, commented, thank you, Doc, for taking care of uh, this patient. You're welcome, Dan. It's my pleasure. All right, for those of you who don't know where we are, we're actually inside his disc. We are inside the herniation, as a matter of fact. That is the herniation, the blue thing, okay? It's part of it. See the herniation right there at 12 o'clock? And this is a pretty bad disc because this, this poor patient has lived for 38 years in back pain. And I know he was involved in the military. Unfortunately, the VA didn't take care of him and get him fixed. But um, we're going to do that today. That said, 38 years of chronic back pain, it really, I mean, it takes a true warrior to live through that. And I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, 38 years of back pain. I hate to say it, folks, but having back pain every day, that's like a, a, a prison sentence, even worse. I know some prisons that are nicer than having back pain every day. But you're a prisoner to your back pain. It affects everything you do. And it keeps you from doing the things you like doing. It keeps you... Um, afraid of doing things because you don't want to set off the pain and these people with chronic back pain they basically are robbed of the quality of their life which is why I do these surgeries for them because I want them to have their quality of life back I've dedicated my career to curing back pain and neck pain and so far we've been very successful at doing it I expect he's gonna have, he's gonna wake up from his surgery and he's gonna notice as soon as he starts moving around that his back pain that he had for all those years is gone. All right, I don't think he's had back surgery before either. I think this is, huh? He has not, he has not. He so he had neck surgery but not back surgery. So he's been living with this for a long time. There's the tear right there, you see it? and kind of make it out. As soon as I hit the laser, it kind of opens up. That's where the herniations have been going out, sneaking out through that tear right there. That's what we want to close off. It will not close off until I clean this blue stuff out, which I'm doing right now. Yeah, thank you. Can you see guys see the pink on the left and right? That is the surface of the bones where that are on both sides of his disc. You see this red area? That's where all that pain is coming from, is back pain. That's the uh, annular tear, full of inflammatory tissue. Okay. 
I'm telling you, nobody really understands this stuff. I've been trying to teach other surgeons about it for years. They're just too stubborn. They don't listen. So unfortunately, the patients suffer because their doctors are in the dark about what causes these back pain and how to fix it. And we need more people aware of it so they don't have to live for 38 years with chronic back pain. So far, so good. He's snoozing away, comfortable, having the best sleep of his life. With Dr. Berndez, his sleep technician and anesthesiologist extraordinaire. You like that sleep technician? People ask me, what, what do you do? And I say, I'm a seamstress. What do you mean you're a seamstress? I mean, I cut, I sew. I don't sew so much anymore with these laser surgeries, but when I was doing back surgeries open, we would be sewing up the wound, you know, when we're done. We'd be cutting and sewing, cutting and sewing. Right, Luis? A lot of cutting and sewing. So for those of you watching and you enjoy these live streams from the Duke Spine Institute here in Melbourne, Florida, I would encourage you to join us. Is it next week we have a fusion or the week after? Next week. Next week we have a spinal fusion. A patient, uh, she happens to be a nurse, I believe. She's having uh, L45, L5S1. I'm going to do it open. I call it a T-lift, T-L-I-F. Transforaminal lumbar inner body fusion. Um, and I'm going to do a decompression infusion. I'm going to open up the neuroforamen. I, you're going to see the nerves in their glory. And we're going to put in cages in the uh, disc space. We're going to put in screws, pedicle screws, rods, cross links. And we're going to do a fusion, a double fusion in the disc space and in the back. It's called a 360 fusion, okay? It's the best fusion money can buy. We're gonna do it right here at Duke Spine. And she's gonna actually go home an hour after the surgery is done. One hour after surgery, uh, maybe two, because those are bigger surgeries. But our patient will be done outpatient. We've been doing outpatient fusions now for 10 years almost here at Duke's at Duke Spine. There's no need to go to the hospital anymore. We do outpatient fusions and we do them well. Are we using rotivacaine on it? Yeah, we're going to use uh, the um, um, Expiral afterwards, which is a uh, liposomal bupivacaine. Basically, it's great medicine it, it it's local in medicine it stays inside the area of the surgery and basically gives them the patient some numbing of their pain some num 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 dr burn does his favorite he's going to do some num num for them huh <laughs> yeah of course for you absolutely burn does all right, we're just about done. Um, so far, so good. I got one more disc to do, but I wanna make sure we get everything in here. Good. This is lateral, by the way. Gotta make sure you take care of the lateral herniation. Always check lateral. Don't just look towards the midline. Let's see if we can see the nerve. The nerve will be just to our left. Oh, too much fat in there. Not enough visibility of the nerve. So, looks good. There's no more pressure on the nerve and the fat, so I'm happy. And I think we just got rid of his back pain that he's had for 38 years. Any questions from our audience? So no current questions. Great. So, so far, two down, one to go. And he's doing fantastic. Couldn't go better for him. Really happy that it's going so well. This guy's a tough guy. You know, when you look at him, you don't see pain on him. But you know he's suffering, and for 38 years he's been suffering. And you guys saw me do that test. Uh, we need a pipe cleaning on this. Yes, sir. 
You guys saw me do that discogram, right? Where you had the 10 out of 10 pain, the 9 out of 10 pain, and the 9.5 out of 10. Okay, the reason why he's got all that pain, I just need one, is because those discs are painful. But he's just grinned and bared it all these years. Um, but now life is going to have new meaning for him. Okay? When you take someone's pain away, they've had for all those years, they're very happy. They can start living a real life. You know, not just a life avoiding setting off their pain, but a life full of, I guess, vim and vigor. But he needs to heal first, so don't get any ideas. He's got to take it easy for about nine months. Let that disc heal up good. All right, we're going to hit the L5S1 next. That's the most painful. If you look at the MRI scan down there in the bottom corner of the screen, you look at L5S1, it doesn't look that bad. But the reality is it's the worst. It's the worst pain source. That's why we don't just look at MRIs. You got to look at the patient. A lot of docs wouldn't have treated the L5-S1. A lot of spine surgeons would have left it alone. They would have only fixed the L4-5, L3-4. And guess what? He would still have pain. That's why so many back surgeries don't work. Shot? Because the doctors are not figuring out where the pain's coming from properly. And I'm telling you, that requires a physical exam. You must see the source of the pain on the patient. If you don't do that, you're not going to identify where their pain's coming from. So if you just use their MRI, you're going to be mistaken. I would say 90% of the time you'll be mistaken. All right, what do we got here? All right, we need to cut around because I need a blade. This last needle is on the edge of the cut. Pull it open. should have done it there we go shot here we come let's give some more num num make dr. Bernda super happy today shot oh yeah this this hole is clogged shit you have another guide wire or not No. No. He's not responding anyway. We're already at the disc. Down shot? Or we're close. What I can do is, um, let me think about it. Yeah, we're already there. <sighs> tight. Very tight very tight getting through here all the arthritis has made it so tight this l5s1 is always the hardest disc to get to and the hardest to fix because it's technically almost impossible you're working through a literally a three millimeter hole we got it and you got to just, literally that needle I put in earlier, you got to make it perfect. That's the hardest thing. Most surgeons can't do it, and they don't even try. They just do translaminar. They cut the, the bone out and the ligaments out of your spine. So they don't even try to go transferaminal. God damn. <laughs> I'm sorry, Luis. My hammering just sucks. That's why I was never a roofer. I'd probably fall off the roof. You're a brave man, Luis. Brave man. All right. Okay. Let's see what we got. Huh? Yeah, when you're roofing? Yeah. Actually, I, you know, I used to use a hammer a lot as a kid. I did, a, I did a lot of uh, stuff around the house, you know, building stairs and walls and my dad was always outside building something with my grandfather and I had a hammer in my hand quite a bit but it's been 40 years since I 
hammered nails, you know? And uh, unfortunately, maybe I just don't like Luis. Maybe I just want to hit a, his hand. I know, I see it. It's the opposite of the numbers. See the numbers here? Yeah. Luis, are you doing something to upset me lately? Huh? Hmm? Did you upset me with something lately? Are you doing something to make me upset? I don't know, maybe. Wait a second. What? You didn't come on the, the cruise, did you? No, I can't. I, yeah. You didn't? No, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I'm hitting you. That's why? Okay. Yeah. Now I know. I should be hitting you, too. <laughs> How many people didn't come on the damn cruise? We spent a lot of money for you guys. I know, I know. All right. Well, in case you're wondering, I Can I Duke Spine Institute treated our staff to a cruise on the river, an old uh, steam steamboat style boat with a nice little dinner, some poker, music and dancing. And now I understand why I'm hitting you with my hammer. It's subconscious. I'm angry because you didn't come with us. You didn't come hang out with me. All right, so next time you're gonna come? <laughs> or you want me to keep hitting you with a hammer? I don't wanna. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No more bruising in my hand, man. Uh huh? No more bruising in my hand. No more hand bruising? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Luis. <laughs> you know I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just terrible aim. Maybe I should let you hammer it in. All right, anyway, this is the last of the three discs. This is the number L5S1, it's the bottom. And we are now inside the herniation, as you can see. Um, this is all scar tissue, the white stuff. This is not normal. This is from chronic, chronic, chronic. What chronic means, folks, is long-standing, old. Old, chronic is old. I don't know what you might think chronic means, but um, in the sp medical field, chronic means it's been going on for longer than, well, most people accept uh, three months as chronic. Subacute would be, you know, two weeks to, to three months. Subacute, uh, there's acute, there's su hyperacute, subacute, uh, sorry, hyperacute, acute, subacute, chronic. And hyperacute means like imminently happening right now. Acute usually means going on right now too, but usually a day or two or three old. And then subacute, most people will accept it as three days to two weeks, three weeks. Chronic is usually after that. So chronic though, generally in this case is 38 years, right? This patient's had 38 years of chronic back pain. And that's what we're seeing, we're seeing the area of destruction. It's like a war going on in, in the Ukraine, right? Russia is attacking Ukraine and you hear about it, but then you actually go there and you see the destruction. That's what we're seeing is the destruction. We're in the war zone. This is the war zone. And this is where the battle has been going on in his back for, well, like I said, for 38 years. That was a piece of herniation we took care of. And this is the manifestation of it. It's the gold stuff, which is calcium. It shouldn't be there. It's the scar tissue, all this white stuff, scar tissue. And it's the blue stuff, the herniation. And the blue stuff is what's causing all the inflammation. You can see it just keeps squeezing out. All right. So far, so good. We got five minutes left, doctor. This will be, uh, we've got two more surgeries after this one. Got a total of six today at Duke Spine. Just about done, a little fat. Must have snuck in there when I put the tube in. Okay. We have a couple questions. Uh-huh. The first one comes from JMC on YouTube. Hello JMC, welcome to our live stream. And they ask, do you ever have to operate on on many or on very many ankylosing spondylitis patients with a pinched nerve at L4 to L5? Hi, JMC. No, ankylosing spondylitis patients rarely ever get surgery. 
as you may know, surgery doesn't fix ankylosing spondylitis, but ankylosing spondylitis patients, if they get anything, what they typically will get is a fracture um, because they'll be stiff and then suddenly they'll fracture through that fused area and they need surgery to fix the fracture. But it's rare. I have done ankylosing spondylitis patients for sure. I've done them. And I have done them for a herniated disc, just like you described, pinched nerve. So yes, we can do it, no problem. If you know somebody who has ankylosing spondylitis and they do have a pinched nerve or back pain, send them to Duke Spine. We can do a free, we can do a virtual consultation and we can tell them what they need done, okay? Next question, just about done. Got about 30 seconds left here. Next question comes from Lori on YouTube, and yep. they asked, you said you uh, go in t uh, into the disc through the tear. Yes. Why doesn't the rest of the internal disc material leak out of, of that area once you are done if you said it heals itself? Okay, great question. So um, first of all, this is the disc material. Notice it's not watery, it's thick. So it could leak out uh, through that area that we, um, we, we cleaned, okay? So the tear is already there, the tear is already open, and they can have disc material leaking out through the tear. That's what happens. That's why the herniations keep getting worse over time, because the patients keep herniating more and more. And more pieces of disc material come out of the tear with you know, bending and twisting and lifting. Once we go in the tear like we are now and we clean it, then the tear itself will heal. Your body will heal the tear. It just needs some help to heal it because you have to remove that blue stuff, the herniation. If you don't remove the blue stuff, the tear won't heal and it'll just keep herniating. So once we clean the tear and it's ready to heal like it is now, right now in this picture, the jelly doesn't just squeeze out, you have to bend. You have to pick up something, usually over 40 pounds. So it's actually bending at the waist, picking up heavy things over 40 pounds and coughing and sneezing and straining. Those are the kind of things that can actually force more herniation out. But they're not, the herniations aren't gonna come out without force, okay? So you need something forcing them out. Done. Hi, Tom, please. Thank you. So you have to you have to pick up something heavy, bend at the waist, or uh, cough hard or sneeze hard in order to squeeze the jelly out of the disc through the tear that hasn't healed. Okay, that's why we tell our patients not to lift up anything for the first six weeks over 25 pounds, and not to uh, bend at the waist for three months. So we actually have restrictions that are designed to prevent a reherniation. Doesn't mean it works every time, but that's the best that we can do right now in this modern era, is just give people um, those restrictions and hope they follow it. We're done. Any more questions? I'll answer them in a few minutes as I come to the broadcast room. In the meantime, we're done, and I'm gonna show you the incision. Okay, we fixed three herniated discs, fixed the back pain he's had for 38 years. It's gone now. It's gone. That back pain is gone. He's gonna realize that in less than an hour. He's gonna be awake, he's gonna get up, and he's gonna say, yep, I don't feel that pain anymore. How do I know? because I've done this thousands of times and I've seen it thousands of times and there's no reason why he would be any different. There's the incision, seven millimeters. Hold that uh, there. Yeah, you got it? We're gonna put a stitch, we're gonna put a little bandage and then he's gonna go and recover for 45 minutes and then go home. Actually, he's gonna stay in a hotel tonight and then go home tomorrow to Michigan. All right, type your questions up for me.
Don't forget Duke Spine Institute broadcast surgery every week, live from beginning to end. We're here to show you real live spine surgery. We're not hiding it. We don't edit it to cut out the bad parts, the screw ups and mistakes. We show you the whole thing. So type up your questions. I'll answer them for you in five minutes. EBL five mil. All right, I'm here with one of my patients who traveled from Australia to Florida to the Duke Spine Institute for treatment. And you look happy today. Yeah. Yeah? Why are you so happy? I'm happy because my back pain is gone. Your back and, pain uh, is and gone. my leg pain is gone. From awesome. The disc, yeah. From the surgery yesterday. Surgery yesterday, yeah. And you had the Duke laser disc repair. I had the Duke laser disc repair, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So why did you come all the way to Florida from Australia for the Duke laser disc repair? Uh, I've been suffering from you know back pain and leg pain for nearly a year after, after an accident. So I did a lot of conservative treatment like physiotherapy, exercise physiology, um, but uh, it hasn't cured my pain. The pain was uh, chronic and I've been suffering from a lot of, uh, you know, issues, emotional um, frustrations and things and sleepless nights. Um, but a uh, couple of neurosurgeons back in Australia has offered me a surgery. Uh, they both offered me a, um, a fusion, uh, which I don't want to um, go for. So then I have looked into uh, Dr. Duke. I found Dr. Duke and he's uh, doing an amazing job doing a laser uh, technology and also doing very minimally invasive procedure. So I thought this is what I wanted and it's uh, it's a faster recovery. I could go back and work back uh, within a couple of weeks. So that's why I traveled all the way from Australia to US. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we did your surgery just yesterday evening. Yeah. So yeah. it's less, it's around 12 hours now from, yeah. from the surgery and your pain is gone. And you can see in the video here where we did the laser surgery we got into your disc endoscopically and we used the laser to clean the tear in the back of the disc at L5S1 where their pain was coming from from all the inflammation. And now that back pain is gone. And you didn't have to have fusion. You didn't have to go to the hospital. You didn't have to deal with uh, narcotics, right? Yeah. You said you took uh, a couple of anti-inflammatories and a muscle relaxer yesterday. Yeah, but I, I didn't have much pain about uh, with the surgery because it's um, you know laparoscopic and minimally invasive, I believe. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So there's not a lot of trauma. There's no scar tissue. There's just a little incision, and of course we don't remove any bone or ligaments from the spine. It's all done minimally invasive and naturally. So it's a natural healing of the disc. Now. You said um, just a minute ago you were suffering with a lot of um, pain and the effects of pain on your psychological well-being. And I know what you do, you're a nurse who yeah. helps patients that have behavioral issues, you know, like uh, anxiety, depression, and, and maybe other things. But you can appreciate how devastating chronic pain can be on people and their loved ones around them. That's true, yeah, I, I completely agree. It, it not only disturbs you, also your family. That's mm -hmm. what I understood. So psychologically, after a few months, I should say, you will have that frustration of chronic pain and then you, your behavior start changing uh, towards others as well. And uh, yes. it's not really, you know, like uh, uh, about you, it's also about your people living around you. That's, that's very important, yeah. You came here for a purpose. You got your surgery that you had hoped to do. Now you're gonna go back, back to Australia. Yeah. You got a long trip ahead of you coming up. And how do you feel about your experience here at Duke Spine overall? Oh, it's really good. Um, staff is really welcoming and uh, you know, it's spot on and they receive you with a smile and which is really great. And um, my father was telling, oh, it's amazing how, you know, I, he never thought that uh, in American health system, people like you know the clinicians are like this um, so he was treated differently probably before mm -hmm. while he lived in the US but it was really amazing and your staff is really cool I thank you say. Yeah, they're welcoming they are they're good thank you very much and, and it's and you are the best I, I appreciate it. it's it's an honor to take care of you and and it's so 
it makes me feel um, so satisfied to see you happy yeah. and out of yeah. that pain. So congratulations. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Yeah. If you are suffering from back pain, this is a you know like a very good cutting edge technology and very advanced surgery, um, which Dr. Duke has developed his own and without minimal, you know, like you know, no damage to the bone, no damage to other things and easily approaching to the disc and removing it. Um, he is very skillful in reaching there without, you know, manipulating any of your muscles or anything. And you can see from me that I have recovered within few hours after the surgery. So um, I would say if you don't want a long term complication from the surgery, this is the best surgery you can get done by Dr. Duke here. Congratulations once Thank again. You, Doctor. This is Dr. Ari Duke Majin, CEO and founder of the Duke Spine Institute. I'm here with one of my patients, and you've traveled from where to the Duke Spine? Idaho. Idaho, with your lovely husband, and we've had a few conversations. She came here to have her back fixed. How long have you had back pain for? For over seven years. Okay. And what kind of work did you do before you retired, if you don't mind me asking? It was desk work. All right. And so you had back pain for seven years. Um, did you have an injury to your back or did it just kind of gradually come on? It just gradually came on. I actually noticed it first in 2015 when I was gardening and I couldn't be up there for eight hours. I was into it for about four hours and I had to take a break. And as time progressed, my breaks got longer and longer and the amount of work I did in the garden was less and less. Understood. And you're retired now. So what's it like having back pain limit your ability to do stuff when you're retired? It, for me, it's very frustrating. I can't do that which what I want to do. Um, so we kept seeking solutions and nothing was working. They did work for a short while, but that short while decreased over time. It was shorter and shorter. My husband does research very, very well. Through his research, he found you. We read that you can fix my back, and you did fix my back. That's right. And I thank you. You're welcome. So when did you have the Duke laser disc repair done and the Duke plasma rhizotomy? I had those done yesterday in the afternoon. I am sitting straighter than I am. I'm standing straighter. I'm walking normal. It's like, wow, I knew me. Look at that smile right there. <laughs> I hadn't seen that until just now. So Well, it wasn't there yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't there before surgery. And how long have you been not smiling because you've been in pain? I mean, really bad pain. How long has the really bad pain been there? This, well, the really bad pain has probably been over the last five years. It's something that was really tough to maintain a positive attitude and try to keep a smile on my face and keep Jeff's hopes up. Um, I tend to be a positive person, but there were times when it does drag you down. Of course, yeah. It's hard living with chronic pain, and especially with loved ones, they have a hard time, you know, relating. Of course, they want to be supportive, and your husband is a very supportive man, obviously. And he's a pleasure to meet. I know he's an author as well. Um, and so what are you going to do now that you've had the surgery? And you could see, actually, the Duke laser disc repair procedure she had done yesterday. You can see... Right here, we went into the discs that were damaged. You had two annular tears. We tested your discs during the surgery and indeed they were causing your pain. So we verified that with our discogram. And then I went ahead and used the laser to clean up the tears that were causing your pain and get rid of that source of pain for you. And here you are, you're doing fantastic. How much of your back pain from before surgery do you still have? Oh, virtually nothing. It's gone. It's gone. Cured. My lower back, it's, I have not been without pain in my lower back until your surgery. It's constant, it's always there. I've never been without it. I'm without it now. <laughs> so are you uh, going to go back to gardening? You bet I am. <laughs> All right, very good. And what other things would you like to do now that you have a new back that doesn't hurt you anymore? 
You know the biggest thing I want to do? I want to go fly a kite. <laughs> yeah. Let's go fly a kite then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on having faith oh, and being brave you. and getting it done. Oh, yeah. not a problem. Is there anything else you want to say to your fans out there? Um, I highly recommend Dr. Duke Spine Institute, uh, Dr. Duke personally, to help you fix your back. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Safe travels. Phew, that wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. All right. So now you've had the surgery. How are you doing today? I feel awesome. I mean, the only pain is, you know, surgery site pain and that's okay. it. No nerve pain. So the pain that you had before the surgery is gone, gone, cured. Gone. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Yes, that's amazing. I'm Dr. R. Duke Majin with the Duke Spine Institute, and I'm here with one of my patients who just had the Duke Laser Disc Repair on her lower back, and she wants to share her story with you. Now, you came to Duke Spine Institute because you were having back and left leg pain for how mm -hmm. long? Uh, well, that the terrible left leg pain probably about two years but prior I mean I've had issues since I was 14 years old so it's been a lot of roller coaster pain since then so you've had back pain since you were 14 you're clearly not 14 anymore no <laughs> and so that's like 15 20 years right yeah too long and so why didn't you get it fixed sooner well the doctors when I was younger didn't want to operate they wanted to you know I was young they didn't want to take a chance because the all the surgeries then at that point there was just nothing there that could that wasn't going to be traumatic to my back and my spine so I went through physical therapy shots um, decompression they did that and nothing was really working and then it eventually kind of got better and then it would get worse and it would get better and it was just up and down up and down up and down and the reason it got better was the inflammation from the injury to your disc started to get better yeah but then you'd have another herniation with activity and then it made it worse so yeah. when we were in there and you can see from this video right here that we were pulling out lots of big fragments of disc herniation you probably over your lifetime from 14 until now had at least 10, 20 different episodes of herniation. And that's what we saw when we were inside there. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you've had the surgery. How are you doing today? I feel awesome. I mean, the only pain is, you know, surgery site pain and that's okay. it, no nerve pain. So the pain that you had before the surgery is? Gone. Gone, cured. Gone, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Now, you're not from Florida. No, I'm from Ohio. So you traveled <laughs> from Ohio to the Duke Spine Institute in Florida. Why did you come all the way down to Florida? There was nobody near us or anywhere near us that had any other option besides either getting a discectomy or a laminectomy or a fusion. There was just no other, nobody was doing anything else. And I knew I didn't want to do that again because I'd already had that done. So it didn't work. <laughs> and, didn't work. Uh, I had a really amazing physical therapist that connected me with you and the rest is history. Yeah, your yeah. physical therapist found us and, mm -hmm. and was intrigued with the surgeries we're doing here yeah. and sent you here. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to tell your physical therapist, uh, I call <laughs> him Dr. Salinas, what are you going to tell him when you... Oh man, I mean I've already told him. I texted him the minute I got back to our Airbnb, I said, I feel amazing and I can't wait to tell all the rest of the patients in our Facebook group. like. This works, so. It does, the Duke Laser Disc Repair really does work. Mm. Well, is there anything else you wanna to say to your fans out there or friends? <laughs> my fans and my friends. Um, thank you for praying. Thank you for, uh, you know, believing me. I think it, that's one of the biggest things. There's a stigma around back pain because you can't see it, that people are just faking it or maybe they're babies. Like, why can't you just deal with the pain? And it's it overwhelms you and so to come someplace that believes me and then fixes the problem. And now I'm sitting here and I can be like a fully active mom. So I'm just beyond thankful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, chronic pain robs people of their dignity and their their happiness and joy in life. And, and also their loved ones, the people that care about them. Yeah. Because they suffer with you. Yeah, yeah. a lot. <laughs> well, congratulations and praise God. Yes. You found us. Thank you very much. And uh, I think you're gonna do fantastic. I'm looking forward to being strong again. <laughs> awesome. Yes. All right.
Okay, well, hopefully you've enjoyed our broadcast on this surgery. Our patient came from Michigan to Florida for his Duke laser disc repair. This is endoscopic surgery designed to cure back pain and leg pain from a herniated disc or more than one herniated disc as in the case of this patient. This patient has suffered with back pain for 38 years. Since the military, he injured his back and um, he found us online. And I just feel horrible for people like him because, well, I'm happy he's here, obviously, getting fixed, but 38 years of life incapacitated with back pain. And what that means is every time these patients with this back pain, every time they try to twist or move or do sports or play or hang with their friends, ride a motorcycle, whatever it is they like to do, golf, they're in pain. And so what happens is, um, you know, we get conditioned, people with back pain get conditioned over time. And what I mean by conditioning is a psychological term where their brain is basically taught that um, certain activities are going to make their pain come on. And so they basically avoid those activities. And we call that fear avoidance behavior. It basically is a modification of human behavior that is based on the fear of exacerbating a problem, you know, pain in this case, back pain. So 38 years of life, with back pain, it just robs your quality. It also affects your spouse, okay? I know he's here with his wife. She's a lovely lady. I can't imagine my relationship with my wife and what, what these people have been through, you know, for 30 years of uh, enduring that pain and suffering. And, and it affects everything you do, from eating to bathing to sleeping to all your activities to work your social life, your personal life, your intimacy, all of those entire life is, is just harmed by chronic back pain. So that's why I've dedicated my entire career in Duke Spine Institute to helping people in back pain because nobody else is really doing it. There's lots of pain management doctors, lots of chiropractors, lots of PTs, lots of people out there that say they're going to help you, but they don't. And um, it's not that they don't want to. I'm sure they want to. They don't have the ability to. The only way to get rid of back pain is surgery. There really is no other way. I'm sorry. I know you don't want to hear this, but it's a God's honest truth. And it's born out of 30 years of me being a neurosurgeon, medical school, studying, understanding, learning, and, of course, finally, being successful and succeeding at curing back pain. And now we're able to cure back pain quite easily. Of course, not all back pain comes from the disc. Okay, some back pain comes from the facet joints. And just let me show you what I'm talking about. There's two types of joints in the spine. There's the disc, which is the giant white thing here between these bones, and that's what we are fixing today. And then there's the facet joints, which are these little joints in the back of the spine. For every disc you have, you have two facet joints. So if you have a, let's just come down here and look at the bottom of the spine. You have the L5 bone, the S1 bone. This is the L5 S1 disc right here. Well, there's also an L5 S1 facet joint. You see it right there, left and right. And pain can come from your facet joints and it can come from your disc. 95% of spine pain, 95% of all patients, their pain is either the disc, the facet, or both. 5%, roughly, maybe a little less than 5%, of pain comes from a fractured vertebrae. That requires surgery. So basically, almost 100% of spine pain is a surgical fix. Whether it's a fracture of the bone requiring a kyphoplasty, whether it's a disc tear requiring Duke laser disc repair, or whether it's a facet joint, requiring Duke plasma rhizotomy. We have the fix and it does require an incision. All of these procedures are surgery. They're all minor though, minimally invasive. At Duke Spine Institute, we're able to cure about 98% of people's back pain because we have the technology to do so. You're not gonna find this technology anywhere else. Why is that? Unfortunately, the rest of the spine world is eons behind us and mostly because they have their head stuck up their ass. They're just unfortunately too arrogant to recognize that there's a problem with the way they're treating patients. And actually, to be quite honest with you, I hear stories all the time from people 
who have gone to other doctors and their doctors blame the patients for their back pain. They tell patients things like, it's all in your head, or learn to live with it, or um, toughen up, buttercup, or you need shots, or you need pills, or you need therapy, or you need chiropractor. All of those are basically cop-outs. Oh yeah, one of my favorite. Yeah, fibromyalgia. Okay, all of those are excuses by the doctor who cannot figure out what's wrong with you and doesn't know the right treatment. That's pretty pathetic since we make these broadcasts every week. We've been broadcasting for nine years. Now, before we were doing a lot of the laser surgeries, we were doing fusions and the fusions work as long as you do them right. But who wants to go through a fusion when you can have minimally invasive laser surgery? Those are the two procedures that I know can cure back pain. 98% of back pain, either one. And we used to do a lot of fusions. Now we're doing a lot more of the laser surgery. All right, without further ado, let's get to the questions. Maybe no current hmm. questions. Yeah. No questions. <laughs> hmm. Maybe my audience is smarter than me. Did you, you answered Lori's question, like the internal disc material leak out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So no just one more comment because I get this question a lot. Dr. Duke, you're in there cleaning out that tear, getting rid of the herniation with the laser. So isn't there like an opening in the back of the disc? Yes, there is. But it's like a toothpaste bottle. If you unscrew your toothpaste and you leave it on the counter, you come back a few hours later, the toothpaste isn't leaking out. Okay, because it's thick, thick. It doesn't just leak out the hole. But if you squeeze the bottle and put some pressure, that's when you squeeze the toothpaste out the hole, right? So what I'm doing, I'm cleaning the tear so it's like putting the cap back on. But it takes nine months to put the cap back on. And until then, there's a possibility of squeezing that toothpaste out before that cap is tight. All right, so it's up to the patients to not do things that would squeeze more of the disc out. And that's why we have restrictions. So great question, and we have a great solution. Thanks for watching. We've got two more surgeries to do. We've gotten through four of them. We've got another three level. This patient comes to us. I'm not sure where he's coming from. I think it's North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. And he's got three bad discs with chronic back pain. So we're gonna get in there and clean his discs out and fix them with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Feel free to join us in about 30 minutes for that surgery. If not, have a wonderful afternoon and thanks